Hello, Janix here for FilmChow. First of all, thank you for subscribing to our channel. And if you haven't yet, do subscribe because we have a lot of good stuff coming along the way. And welcome to Cinematography Breakdown. In this program, we'll be breaking down shots in terms of framing and lighting and the reasons as to why they are lit in such a way. We'll mostly be doing independent films, low budget ones, to see how they do it and hopefully you could learn from their setup. Uh, this show is actually inspired by Matt Workman, another great cinematographer who also does his own breakdown over at Cinematography Database. So today we are going to talk about the film Under. Uh, in this film, we are going for a very dark, low-key uh, lighting to echo the inner workings of the character's head. In terms of lighting, we are very uh, low budget. We only have the RE 400 watt HMI PAR and we have two 900 bulb LED panels and we have a pair of dead lights. Okay, so for the first scene, uh, we have this Dali movement. I don't exactly remember the lens that we were using, but I think we were using the uh, EF2470 and by the looks of it we were set to 45 to 50 millimeter which is effectively an 85 millimeter on the Ursus 1.7 crap factor. Okay, now let's go back to the first shot. Uh, we have a few things going on here um, and if you hear in the background that's my baby screaming. Okay, so in the first position we have two things going on here. As you can see there's sort of a green tinge going on here that's coming from the uh, practical, from the fluorescent bulb, you know, the low wattage um, fluorescent bulbs. So we have that shining here, um, giving that green tinge. Uh, normally, we'll add a minus green on that light, but given the nature of the character's penchant for mystery, we decided to keep it as is, uh, which does give an interesting look to the image, you know, that green thing going on here. And if you notice, um, we also have some frames here of the uh, uh, of our hero. Um, it's just you know it's just in the background along with the mess over here. This one's dirty. Well, that's uh, Misa San for you. You know, we're giving a very subtle backstory to the character by using these frames. It's barely noticeable, but it's there. Now on the second position, uh, the background is actually lit by a 400 watt. HMI, which is uh, behind hidden behind this uh, wall, so that's right over here, shining its light, shining its light here. So um, the HMI actually has a full CTO um, to give it the uh, sodium vapor look of uh, the street lamps. Now there are specific gels to give it a more accurate sodium vapor look, but for our purposes, the CTO uh, will do. So that shadow you see here is actually from the barn doors let me clear this screen for you so the shadow you see here uh, is from the barn doors of the HMI so we just you know this barn door we just close it a little bit so we got a little bit of shadow going on here and then this glow over here and the other light coming here and the other light coming here is actually from a 900 bulb um, LED panel which is uh, just below the HMI shining its light here and then given that the walls are painted white we didn't anymore bother to set up extra lights and we just let the light from the HMI uh, and the LED panel bounce around everywhere so as you can see from uh, from from him from our hero we got this nice soft light coming uh, from the side so that's actually from the HMI bouncing into the white fold here and then reflecting back to him. Moving on. Now as he enters the door in this shot, we have the 400 watts inside here um, behind the wall to its lowest setting without any gels or nets and it's set to half spot to give the hero this uh, hard edges right here. Uh, the decision not to make it softer comes from the fact that we are portraying this man as a mysterious and a hardened character. So uh, we didn't want any, you know, we didn't want it to be wrapping around here. We just want a hard light hitting him over there. Now, again, we didn't flag the HMI or anything. We didn't put any cutters or anything. So we just let it spill all over the room. So the ambient light that you see everywhere here is actually coming from the HMI, which is spilling all over. 
Now the kitchen is actually lit by a 150 watt dead light and as we pan down you see it here uh, sorry you don't say pan down you say tilt down um, because that's the correct term and you will see that the dead light is actually here and this shot of light is caused by that uh, 150 watt dead light and it's also bouncing around giving this little ambient glow inside the kitchen now as we play, we see him open the cover and then there's some reflections over there. Now in this shot, nothing's changed. The dead light is still here. When he opens the, the cover, um, the light is hitting the knives, which you will see in the next shot. So the, the, the dead light is just hitting the lights, which is causing uh, all the reflections over there. And in this shot, actually, we, used, uh, we moved the uh, HMI behind him. Um, same setting, no modifiers, no nothing, just straightly, straightly pointed at him to give him again that edge light or rim light, whatever you want to call it. Now the reverse shot, you see all these knives uh, and this is lit by one dead light, which is uh, causing all the reflection on the hero's face. And as we tilt up together with the knife, we see we have this reflection uh, reflecting into the hero's face. Um, this one actually, uh, we repositioned another dead light just somewhere here, away from the camera. We just hit it here, and that light is just, you know, uh, hitting the knife directly, which reflects and uh, giving him this nasty reflection. Okay, so when the lights turn on right there, um, this whole scene is actually lit by uh, the location's practical lights which is uh, fluorescent bulbs except for this shaft of light which is coming from our dead lights um, now the decision to use uh, the practical lights when uh, the lights turn on is because the only available uh, lights we have left are the uh, LED panels but when you turn on the LED panels it doesn't turn on instantly unlike the fluorescent bulbs um, when you turn on the led panels you know it has this uh, fading in kind of thing going on so we didn't use that so what we did is uh, expose our shot to the practical light and dim down the dead light and increase a little bit uh, the opening and iso of the camera so for our purposes that's okay because we have no other available lights and we are independent film so it's fine now when we cut to his reaction shot, uh, this scene is no longer lit by the practical lights. Why? Uh, because if we use the practical lights, then it will be giving the wrong color cast. Uh, it will be giving you know a little bit of green, green uh, tint and it will be giving the wrong shadows and there will be no emotions into the scene. So instead, what we used are two LED panels. Uh, one panel is right here, tilted a little bit down so that gives him the side lighting and then one here just behind the camera well the two panels are behind the camera um, pointing upwards to the ceiling to let it bounce and give an overall ambient lighting now as he turns around and we see the room behind him uh, it we turned off already the HMI the 400 watt HMI we turned it off and we turned on the practical light over here which, uh, as you can see, if we play it forward, it's actually flickering. But that's okay, because we are focusing on their faces. Now, we change from the harsh lighting of the 400 watt HMI to the LED and the practical to signal the change in the character's mind. Basically, now it's back to reality. Now, you see, even though that we are already bright, there are still a lot of shadows everywhere. Shadows there, shadows here, shadows there. Um, it's not a high key lighting like a rom-com or a bright TVC, rather we're going with uh, realism here. See this kitchen uh, is lit with the two practical lights and that's what we're going for. Personally, when a light films, I say films because for TVCs, of course, I like depending on the requirements for that TVC. Anyway, with films, I tend to go with realism where I exaggerate the key light source uh, for the location we are in. For this instance, the key light source of the room is the two uh, practical lights. 
So what I did is just to uh, exaggerate that lighting with our two LED bulbs, uh, sorry, with our two LED panels to give it a bit more drama and to give it a bit more emotion. Now, if this was a rom-com or any other film, I would have lit this differently. I would have used the HMI to bounce it towards the ceiling to give the whole room an even light. Or I would have even used a uh, one by one diffusion and shine the HMI from there. Depends on the uh, requirements. And then inside here, if I had more lights, I would have used another uh, 575 or maybe uh, even a Kino flows and put it in the ceiling to give uh, a more even lighting inside the kitchen. And then use the LED bulbs or the LED panels to give them a little bit of dimension. Now when we move to the wide shot, aside from the realism, this kind of lighting actually gives a, even more depth into the character. Um, you see all the shadows, all the shadows over here, adds more depth into the image, into the film, into the scene, consequently giving more depth into the character. Um, together with the location, uh, the, the framing, the lighting, the set design, um, we now see that the hero is just imagining or playing around or escaping his reality because his world is this dark shadowy life where he gets pushed around by her wife. Uh, so before I forget, this scene is actually lit by, again, two LED panels, one pointing down towards him and one pointing upwards to bounce into the ceiling to give an overall ambient light. Now the whole film, now in terms of framing, aside from this wide shot in the end, um, everything's actually filmed in close-ups. So if you go back, these are all close-ups, even in the opening scene. The opening scene, well, it looks like a wide shot, but it's actually a close-up. Now the idea is, aside from the reveal at the end, using close-ups brings us much more closer into the world of the character. It, it lets us peek even closer inside the character's head. And that's it for today's breakdown. I hope you learned something, or at least got an insight into the world of cinematography if you're an aspiring filmmaker. Um, just like this one. Um, if, you, if you like, please do subscribe to receive more content just like this one and to receive other informative and educational content as well in Film Show. Uh, I have to take care of my baby now. Back to you!